Hey everyone, welcome back to trigonometry. This is going to be lecture nine of the course. And in this section, well, this will be the first of what I would kind of consider, like broadly speaking, the third section of trigonometry. And, and specifically, we're going to start talking about analytic trigonometry. So we're going to be using a lot of identities and kind of proving some things and doing some verification. And so this section in particular is kind of an introduction to the idea of verifying trigonometric identities. And you can kind of think of it as a uh, sort of an introduction to the idea of proving mathematical statements. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm going to call this section 3.1. Uh, as I say, this is the first of what I would consider to be the third main section of trigonometry. And we're going to call it verifying trig identities. Okay, and so uh, we've seen trigonometric identities already, some. Uh, so some examples. So some examples of trig identities have already sort of uh, appeared. Right, so we've seen things like this, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one, right? It's the Pythagorean identity, we saw this. We also saw this guy, the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x over the cosine of x. Right, we saw that one, we've seen oh, lots of examples already. For another one might be the uh, reciprocal identity like the sine of x equals one over the cosecant of x right etc right so we've seen these these are what we mean when we say trigonometric identities right so now in some of these cases we verified them already we sort of showed why they're true and in other cases we just kind of stated them as a fact <clears throat> right and so what we'll be doing in section uh, in this in this third section of the course is we're going to be introducing trigonometric identities and instead of just stating them as a matter of fact, we're going to try to verify the truth, the trueness of the identity. Meaning we're going to not just say that sine of x is equal to 1 over cosecant of x, but we're going to show that it's true using uh, verification techniques. Okay, and so the question of how to verify a trigonometric identity is, you know, a varied, uh, and you'll get varied responses depending on the identity, of course. But in general, what we want to do is we want to show that one side of the identity can be simplified or changed or expanded uh, until it's equal to the other side of the identity. Uh, you, and these changes and simplifications and expansions need to basically just adhere to algebraic and trigonometric techniques. Okay, so let's see a simple example. Well, let me, let me put that down here in concrete. So I, we'll start with the left-hand side of the statement. And we want to show that that is equal to the right-hand side of the statement, right? And all the stuff that we do in the middle, this is just going to be algebra and trig trigonometry. Right, so we're just going to use algebraic maneuvers that we've seen a million times before and or we're going to use trigonometric identities that we've already uh, adopted or verified. Okay, let's see a simple example, something to kind of ease us into this whole idea. So let's verify uh, that the secant of x times the cotangent of x is equal to the cosecant of x. Okay, so I've got a secant and a cotangent. I multiply those together and those are equal to the co and that that product is equal to the cosecant. So let's verify it. Right? So in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to convert the trig function to sine and or cosine. This is a common technique that we'll use throughout our our studies in analytic trigonometry. And so we're going to start by, you know, writing the, in this case, the left-hand side, secant x, cotangent x. And we're going to convert the form of this thing into something equivalent. And in this case, we're going to turn the secant into 1 over cosine. We know that's the case, right? That's the reciprocal identity. And we're going to convert the cotangent into cosine over sine. 
Okay. Right now, all we've done is we've said, okay, this guy here, that's this one. And this guy here, that's this one. Right? So these two are certainly equal. Right? If you have the secant, it's the same as 1 over cosine. If you have the cotangent, that's the same as cosine over sine. And what we can do then is you can easily see that we get a cancellation of the cosines, and we're left with 1 over the sine of x. Right? And we know that, the one, that 1 over the sine of x is equal to the cosecant of x. Okay? This is the reciprocal identity. Okay. And so what have we shown here? This is a, a great example of just starting with the left-hand side and using algebra and or trigonometry, converting that into the right-hand side. Right. So this right here, secant cotangents equal to this, 1 over cos times cos over sine, which is you know, use it just using basic algebra equal to 1 over sine, and then using this trig identity, 1 over sine is equal to cosecant. Right, and so once we've done that, we can see that indeed this trig identity is true, and that's what we mean when we say to verify it, right? To just show that one side does indeed equal the other side, and to show it just using this sort of uh, algebra and or trig uh, identities, okay? Okay, perfect. Let's do another example. All right, so sometimes these are easy, sometimes they're very challenging, and frequently it's the case that there are maybe multiple ways to solve or to verify an identity. All right, so let's verify the sine of x times the tangent of x plus the cosine of x. This is all equal to the secant of x. Okay? And so in general, you want to start usually you want to start with the side that's more complicated, that's more complex, has more going on. Usually you want to start on this side just because there'll be more opportunities to convert the expression. Right? So in this case, this is the more complex side of the expression. So we're going to start there. So sine of x, tangent of x, plus cosine of x, right? And so I'm just going to use the same trick as I used above. Namely, I'm going to convert these trig functions into cosine and sine equivalents, right? So this is the sine of x times, now tangent is sine over cosine. And then plus cosine of x, OK? All right, so I've got this. Now. Um, I can combine this, right? So this is like sine of x over 1 times sine of x over cosine of x. And so I can combine that and I get sine squared x over cosine x and then plus cosine x. Okay. And, you know, when you see something like this, it's probably a good idea to get a common denominator and to combine these two terms. Right, so to get a common denominator of cosine, I need to multiply this term here by cosine on the top and the bottom. So I'll be very explicit here when I write this out, but just know you don't have to be this explicit when you, when you do this. Just make sure you get the right answer. So this is cosine of x, and I'm going to multiply it times cos x over cos x. Right, I can do that. And what do I get? I get sine squared x over cos x plus cos squared x over cos x, right, like so. Okay, And when you have a common denominator, you can combine the denominators, and you can write it like this. Right. Okay. And now you may be looking at this saying, well, this is just kind of going this is going all, all sorts of different than what I might have expected. But if you look closely at that numerator, this is the Pythagorean identity. Right? We actually started off by writing that out here. Right? The sine of x, the sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So that whole numerator here, this is all just 1. So this is 1 over cos x, right? And just like before, the reciprocal identity tells us that this is equal to the secant of x. OK, 
Okay, so we've shown that this side here, right, namely this guy here, is equal to, through this chain of algebra and trigonometry, is equal to this over here. Right? And so we have verified this identity. Okay? All right, very good. So in this lecture, we're just going to go through a handful of examples and kind of try to establish some level of comfort with this whole concept and also introduce some techniques that are kind of common to, uh, you know, trig identity verification. So let's do another example. Okay, in this example, we're going to verify that the cosine of x uh, sorry, cosine of x minus cos x sine squared x okay, is equal to cosine cubed x. Okay, so we want to verify this. So if I have a cosine value and I subtract from it the product cosine sine squared, then I get cosine cubed. <clears throat> And so, uh, in this case, we're going to use a common trick where we factor out a trig function. Right, so we'll factor out a, 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 a trig function. Right, so I'm going to start with the complex side here, and I have cos x minus cos x sine squared x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the cosine from both of these terms. i got a term here and a term here. Both of them have cosine. So I can factor it out. And when I do that, I get this. All right now, hopefully you remember what factoring means. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both of these by cosine. Right. So when I do that, I get a one here, and then those cancel, and I get the sine squared. Right. Right. But to keep it equal, I have to I have to multiply by cosine as well. Right. So that's what's happening with the factoring. Hopefully that's. Hopefully that's review. I mean, I think to take trig, you probably have had some algebra, so factoring should be something you've probably seen. Okay, and now a nice little trick here is that this guy here is related to uh, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one. Right now, in particular, you can think of sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one. You can do a little algebra to that. And you'll see that if I subtract sine squared from both sides, I get cos squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, and so that's kind of the trick right here. And so basically, I've got 1 minus sine squared x here, and that's equal to cosine squared. So I'm going to rewrite this down here on the lower line. All right, and that's equal to cos x, and now instead of 1 minus sine squared x, I'm going to plug in a cosine squared x. Okay, And so obviously, this is just cosine cubed x. right? And so we started out with this guy here. That's this expression here, minus all this chicken scratch with the denominator there. And we, through a series of algebraic maneuvers, we say that's equal to this, and then it's equal to this, and then of course it's equal to this, and that's the other side. All right, so we have verified this identity. Okay. All right. Right now, notice these identities are true. I mean, so I didn't really talk about this, but notice that when I say that cosine x minus cos x sine squared x equals cos cubed x. This is true for any x. Right? There's no so my my point in like kind of raising that is just to emphasize that these are kind of powerful expressions. Right? Any angle whatsoever, I can plug into these identities and the you know, the validity of the identity holds. Right? So this may seem like just some kind of arbitrary nonsense, but in, t in fact, you know, these trig identities are uh, extremely complex and there's a ton of relationships that exist between and among them. 
right? And so we're just kind of getting a glimpse of it. The trig identities you could spin up are countless. We're just kind of going through some, some nice early examples. Okay, let's do another one. Let's take a look at another example. This one will be slightly trickier than the ones we've seen. Okay, so we'll say cosine x over 1 plus sine of x, okay, plus 1 plus sine of x over cosine of x, right? So cos x over 1 plus sine x plus 1 plus sine x over cos x. This is all equal to 2 times the secant of x. Okay. So in this example, we're going to use a, a common technique where we combine the two terms. Right, so we're going to combine those given terms. Now, when we do that, that basically means we have to get a common denominator. So to do this, we'll need a common denominator, right? And so this is a very common trick. And so I, I, I would like to encourage you to try to get as, as good as you can at this whole idea of getting common denominators. Okay, so let's do this. So we'll start again with this side, cos x over one plus sine x plus one plus sine x over cos x. And so to get a common denominator, we know that the denominator needs to be equal to the product of these two, 1 plus sine x times cos x. That's going to be the common denominator. And so we need to multiply this term by cos x over cos x. Right? So let's write the original piece here. Okay, and we're going to multiply it by cos x over cos x. Okay? And then this other one, 1 plus sine x, over cos x. That side we need to multiply by 1 plus sine x over 1 plus sine x. Right? And the reason we do that is, as you can see, the denominator here is going to be 1 plus sine x quantity times cos x. And then you'll have the same thing over here, 1 plus sine x quantity times cos x. Okay? And so kind of in one step, I'm going to combine the denominators, and then I'm going to write all of the terms in the numerator as a single uh, expression. Okay, so I've got cos x times cos x, so that's cos squared x. And then I've got 1 plus sine x times 1 plus sine x, right? And so that is 1 plus sine x quantity squared. And then the denominator is 1 plus sine x times cos x, like, like so. Okay. And when you've got a numerator like this, where you've got, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a term like this that, you know, one plus something quantity squared, you should probably expand it. You know, usually that's helpful. So I'm going to write this as cos squared x, just copying that over. And then I'm going to foil this out. Right. So when I do that, I get one plus two sine x plus sine squared x. And that's just simply using the FOIL method on this on this term here. Okay, And then all of that is over 1 plus sine x times cos x. All right. And what we'll see here, as what you can probably see already, is that I've got a cos squared x and a sine squared x. So if I regroup those, Right, so if I kind of put those together and I just kind of, and then I write this other piece in the middle, sort of, you know, kind of off to the side here, then I'm going to be able to use my, I'm going to be able to use my Pythagorean identity on this. And so sine squared x plus cos squared x is just 1. So I get 1 plus 1 plus. 2 sine x divided by 1 plus sine x times cos x. Okay, so let's uh, I'm gonna switch pages here. All right, so I've got that piece there. And 
Well, I can add the one and the one together, and let's do that, and I'll just kind of do that in one step here. Two plus two sine x. I want to make sure people can see exactly what I what you would see if you were trying to solve this from scratch. All right, so I've got two plus two sine x, so I can factor a two out of both of these. And that's helpful because I've got a one plus sine x on the bottom and one on top as well now. And so I'll be able to do some canceling, huh? All right, so I've got this. Okay. And then I can cancel here. All right, so I get two over cos x. Okay. Now you can think of this as two times one over cos x, right? And we know that one over cos x is secant, right? So this is really two times the secant of x, and that's what we're trying to get to. Okay, so that's the that's the result we're after. Right? So you can see if I kind of bring this back up. We started with cos x over 1 plus sine x plus 1 plus sine x over cos x, right? So we started this whole long deal like right here, and everything is just equals, 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 all the way until it gets to here, and we say that it's equal to 2 times the secant of x. Okay, so this is a great example of, you know, using, uh, getting that common denominator Right, starting with an expression that has, you know, uh, you know, two, two fractions in it and different denominators. We'll combine the denominators and see what kind of opportunities open up. Right, so that's a very common technique that you'll come across. Okay, um, another example. Okay, another example. Um, let's go ahead and verify that uh, the sine of x over 1 plus cosine of x, this is going to be equal to 1 minus the cosine of x over the sine of x. Okay. Now, in this example, this, we're going to use a, a very sort of subtle technique. Right, something kind of subtle that uh, that um, is a little bit hard to think of on on the fly. But what we're going to do is we're going to introduce. You can kind of think of it as introducing a new factor into the expression. So in this example, we are going to introduce a new factor into the expression. Okay, right, and um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the left-hand side. We're gonna start with sine of x over one plus cosine of x, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the top and the bottom by one minus cosine of x. Okay, so I've got sine of x over 1 plus cos x, and I'm going to multiply that by 1 minus cos x divided by 1 minus cos x. Right, very important to notice why I can do this. Why can't I do this? Well, this is just algebra, right? So we know that this is 1, you know, when you have something divided by itself, it's 1, right? So this is the same thing as multiplying by 1, which doesn't change the value of the expression, right? But here we're strategically choosing to write 1 as 1 minus cos x over 1 minus cos x because we need this, we need, we need something from these terms, okay? And so what ends up happening here, let's take it kind of slow here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator. So I get sine of x times 1 minus cos x. That's my numerator now. And my denominator is 1 plus cos x times 1 minus cos x. Okay, and you might have seen something like this uh, before. Right, I'm going to 
do a little aside here, you might have seen something like a plus b times a minus b, right? Whenever you have that and you FOIL that out, you end up with a squared, the first term, a times a is a squared, and then you get plus ab minus ab, so the middle two terms of the FOIL, the outside and the inside, they undo each other, right? They cancel each other out, and then you get minus b squared, so b times b is b squared. So you get this kind of a form, right? And that's what we're going to get here because this is like a plus b and this is a minus b, right? It's got that same structure. And so we're going to do the same sort of thing here. Sorry about that. And so when we do that, we get sine of x times 1 minus cosine of x divided by, and then it's just going to be 1 minus right, cosine squared x, okay? So that's exactly, got that same exact structure as what we see up here in this example, okay? And once we've done that, we can use that Pythagorean identity trick again. Okay, so I'm gonna actually set this equal to something else, so I got another aside, so remember, sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to one. And so that implies that one minus cos squared x is equal to sine squared x. Right, so we kind of saw that before, it's the same trick. Okay, and so my, my denominator is gonna become sine squared x. Okay, and so I've got sine of x times one minus cos x divided by sine squared x. Okay, so I'm almost there, right? This denominator is basically sine x times sine x, and so I can do a cancellation here, right? And I can cancel one of those, and I now have one minus cos x over sine of x. Okay, and that's what I'm after, isn't it? That's what the goal is, right? So I started with sine of x over one plus cos x, that's right here, right? And I ended with one minus cos x over sine x, right? Which is exactly what I wanted to end with, right? And everything in the chain of reasoning here is just equals, 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 equals. So this is all, so this side, is equal to this side now, and I verified it, okay? And so the trick here is just knowing that when you see something like one plus cos x, it can be useful to multiply that by one minus cos x, right? Specifically so that you can bring this sort of action into the expression, okay? Very good. All right, um, let's do one more example. Let's do one more example. And this example is gonna use a very classic technique. Um, so sometimes um, it can be advantageous to work from both sides of the identity and to meet in the middle. So what we've done so far is we've started usually with the left-hand side, I think in all the examples we have, we've started with the left-hand side and we've derived until it's equal to the right-hand side, right? Right, we've derived from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And so what this technique does is instead it says, okay, let's start with the left-hand side. Let's derive for a while. Derive just means do some algebra, do the trigonometry, blah, 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 get to, you know, change the expression. And then let's stop and let's go to the right-hand side and let's derive for a while on the right-hand side, right? And then let's meet in the middle. So this is a classic technique. So sometimes you'll be working on the left-hand side of the expression, you'll kind of hit a wall, you know, and instead of giving up and starting over, just stop where you're at and go over to the right-hand side and see if you can make the right-hand side 
equal the endpoint that you got to with the left hand side. Okay, and so we're gonna we're gonna do an example uh, using this technique. Okay, we're gonna use this technique in an example. I'm gonna give myself plenty of space here because I want to get it all on one sheet. So it's not a particularly long or difficult derivation. I just want to make sure to have it all on one sheet so we can look at it. So let's uh, say we want to verify. Uh, that one plus one, sorry, one over one plus cos theta plus one over one minus cos theta, right? So that the sum of these two terms is equal to two plus two cotangent squared theta. Okay, and I just arbitrarily switched to theta from x. There's no significance there. It's just a different name for the variable. All right, so don't don't uh, don't read too much into that. Okay, and so I'm going to first start with the left hand side, and I'm going to derive towards the right. All right, so that means I'm going to start with this piece. All right, so I've got one over one plus cos theta plus one over one minus cos theta. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get a common denominator, right? So this is, uh, if you look two, two examples back, this is basically the idea of combining the terms, right, by getting a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply uh, the denominators together to get the expression that I want. So 1 over 1 plus cos theta. I need to multiply top and bottom by this guy. And then for this other one, I need to multiply top and bottom by 1 plus. So I've got 1 over 1 minus cos theta, and I need to multiply top and bottom by 1 plus. Sorry about that. It's a little small, but hopefully that's OK. Hey, okay, that's 1 plus cos theta over 1 plus cos theta. All right, same idea as what I have here, except plus. All right, and so now my denominator is 1 plus cos theta times 1 minus cos theta, and it's 1 plus cos theta times 1 minus cos theta. So I have a common denominator. Okay, so I can combine those. And so up top I have 1 times 1 minus cos theta. So I really just have 1 minus cos theta and then plus 1 plus cos theta. I'll leave those in parentheses just so you can see where they're coming from. And then the denominator is the common denominator 1 plus cos theta times 1 minus cos theta problem there. And if you look closely at this, I've got 1 plus 1. So I've definitely got a 2 there. And then I've got negative cos theta plus cos theta. So I basically just have a 2 in the top now, don't I? The 1 plus 1, the cos is this cosine and this cosine, they undo each other, right? And then in the bottom, I'm going to, well, we'll do this in two steps. So I got 1 plus cos theta times 1 minus cos theta just to make sure the steps are clear. And what I can do is, this is like a plus b times a minus b. Again, so I have 2 divided by 1 minus cos theta, cos squared theta. Right, so remember this is a uh, plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. That's the idea that's being used to go from this step to this step. Okay. Now let's say when I get to this point, right, when I get to this guy here, I kind of hit a wall. So let's say I can't think of what to do next. Okay. So I get to this thing here and I can't think of what to do next. Now notice I'm not done, right? Because 2 over 1 minus cos squared theta is not the right hand side, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch gears, right? Because look, we're assuming again that I can't figure out what to do next. I have no idea what to do next, even though you can probably look at this and have some idea of what to do next. Let's assume that I can't figure out what to do next, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to next go to the right hand side of the expression. I'm going to start with this thing and I'm going to derive until I get something equal to this. Right, so I'm going to start with the right hand side and I'm going to go this way. Okay, I'm going to go the other direction. 
right? So now I'm gonna say two, two plus two cotangent squared theta. What can I do to that? Maybe I've got a lot of ideas about what to do with that. Okay, what could I do with that? Well, one of the things I can do is I can, I can write cotangent as cosine over sine, right? So this is really two plus two times cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay, and maybe I can get a common denominator. I got a term here with just the two and I got this other term that has you know a numerator and a denominator. So maybe I get a common denominator and I could write two times sine squared theta over sine squared theta plus two times cos squared theta over sine squared theta. Right, so that's just this one. And then the two, I've multiplied it by sine squared over sine squared, so that's like multiplying by one. And so when I multiply all of this together, I get two times sine squared theta plus two times cosine squared theta, and the common denominator is sine squared theta. And so I could do some factoring up top here. And you can see what comes next is the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cos squared is one, right? So this is really just two times one over sine squared theta. Now, <clears throat> let's rewrite that. So this is two over sine squared theta. Now this is starting to look like where I ended when I was working from the left-hand side. Remember I started with the left-hand side of the identity and I worked on it for a while and I got to this part here. And then I said, oh, I, I can't think of what to do next. So I said, okay, just pause, let's just stop there. Let's go to the right-hand side now and let's work on that one for a while. And I worked on it, I worked on it and I kind of get it down here. Now, if I'm looking at these two, if I'm looking at two over one minus cos squared theta and two over sine squared theta, I can probably see that these are the same, right? I can use the Pythagorean identity to write this as two over one minus cos squared theta, can't I? Right? And so now what I've done is I've met in the middle. Okay, so I've met in the middle. I am uh, officially, let me back this up a little bit so I can get it all on one page here. All right, so you can see that I've got, starting from the left-hand side, I can start with this thing here and I can kind of push it through and get to this point. And then I can come down here and I can start with this and I can just back it up. So this is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to this which is equal to this, and then to this, and then ultimately to the right-hand side of the expression. Right, so through this, this method of starting from the left-hand side, working on it a ways, and then starting on the right-hand side and working on it a little ways further, I have gotten to the middle, right, and I've met in the middle. Okay, so let me kind of summarize that a little bit better. I wanna make sure that that point is, is clear. Um, all right, so what did I do? I started with the left-hand side, right, which was equal to what? What was it again? It was one over one plus cos theta plus one over one minus cos theta, right? And I said that that's equal to, and I did a bunch of steps and I got to I got to this expression in the middle, which was two over one minus cos squared theta, right? So this was where we started with the left-hand side and we worked on it a bit and we got to this thing, okay? And then this guy is equal to a bunch of derivations later, was equal to um, two, plus two times cotangent squared theta, right? Which was the right-hand side. 
Okay, so I started with the left hand side and I worked towards the middle. And then I stopped and I went to the right hand side and I worked on it until I reached the same point, right? And so I've created this chain of equality starting with the left hand side and ending with the right hand side, right? So that's what we mean when we say meeting in the middle. Now, in this example, it probably wouldn't have been necessary to stop here. You probably could easily see that this is sine squared theta, and then you might have been able to derive from that the rest of the expression. Um, but uh, maybe or maybe not. Actually, there's some tricks in there that you might not have thought of. right? But anyways, this is a good illustration of the whole concept of, of kind of working on a problem from both sides and meeting somewhere in the middle. OK. All right, so I think we'll stop there with this section. Again, this is just an introduction to uh, trigonometric identities, verifying trigonometric identities. What we'll do next is we'll go through, uh, each section will be kind of a new handful of trigonometric identities, and we'll go through in detail uh, you know, how that identity is derived, and then we'll begin to use it in other verification problems, okay? So we'll end it here, and then we'll pick it up next time with uh, the sum and difference formulas. All right. Take care.